Second case study is a 69-year-old entrepreneur, a businessman, a, 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 a gentleman who had been noticing progressive memory loss now for 11 years. At the age of, of 52, he goes to his locker at, at, the, at the gym, something that he had done on a regular basis, and can't remember his locker combination. So oh, that's strange because, see, he, as a business entrepreneur, he was a numbers guy. He could, he could remember long, complex strings of numbers and add them up in his head like nothing. So he's going like, wow, I, I can remember. I can't believe this. And so that, that was a big wake-up call for him. But he's thinking, oh, I'll get over this. It's just a fluke. His verbal memory recall, based on testing, during that period of time drops from 83rd percentile, meaning after having cognitive deficit and starting to do testing, he is now experienced, uh, he, he is still at 83rd percentile, where he essentially has a better memory, a better verbal recall than 83% of American adults. But over that preceding 11 years, his verbal recall drops to one percentile, the first percentile, meaning that 99% of American adults have better verbal memory recall than he does. As a business owner and entrepreneur, he had been exceptionally gifted at remembering names and faces and numbers, and now he has a full-time personal assistant who continues to remind him who that person is because he cannot even remember faces. He's distraught. He doesn't know what to do. In fact, as, as he talked to his neurologist, he said, I will pull out a book that looks very interesting to me. There's something really interesting about this book. And I will be into, I'll be, have, I've read a full four or five chapters before I realize that I've already read this book. Lost memories. See, what happens in Alzheimer's is that those neurons that are synaptically attached, like little buttons, are synaptically attached to, to uh, other nerves in various connections, are like cables that can get unplugged. Remember back in the 40s and 50s or whenever it was, and you see, you see on TV the, the operators unplugging cables and play, connecting people, and they were just really fast? That's what, you like, what your neurons are like. Those neurons are, are those, those synapses are right there next to each other. And if they get somehow disconnected, pulled apart, you've just lost that memory. Because you see, memories in any portion of a memory has its own neuron, its own, uh, its own synapse, I should say. And if that connection, like a cable connecting to, to a operator's board, once that cable gets disconnected, that memory is completely gone. Actually, it's not gone. It's just that you, you can't retrieve that memory. Meaning that if that synapse gets, gets uh, adjusted and optimized, you could potentially get that memory back. Very interesting. I recently saw a, a YouTube video of a lady who had become blind after spinal surgery. She had a stroke, she was having spinal surgery. Uh, well, they said she had had a stroke during spinal surgery, and she woke up from that surgery blind. She was not one of these women who felt sorry for herself and just stayed in a dark room all day. She said, I'm going to get going, I'm going to enjoy life. And so she learned to read Braille, she learned to, she, she, she went skydiving, she, not the, being blind didn't stop her from having a great life. And that continued for 23 years where she was completely 100% blind. And one day she had a fall. 
a very fortuitous fall, injured her back, went in for spinal surgery again, and woke up being able to see. Woke up being able to see. It's so cute. You see her behind a wheel, Kina and her uh, elderly lady now. She says, I feel like I'm 20 and ready to go. Because she just had that vitality. She never lost that vitality. Now she can see. Boy, wouldn't it be wonderful if we can... And, and the physician thought, the surgeon thought, well, maybe we restored the blood flow to that part of the brain. Or, that, or reactivated the nerve flow to that part of the brain. Interesting. If we could reactivate the, the initial things that led to the complication leading to Alzheimer's. This 69-year-old gentleman, after, giving his, uh, after being told that he could go on this comprehensive plan, this comprehensive plan that involved a significant change in his diet, that involved a commitment to exercise, that involved looking at every single factor and a tremendous number of labs and figuring out where are all the gaps that are contributing to my condition? How can I best personalize this for me and make it truly functional? And rather than saying, you know, 69. I might have 15 years left. I don't want to live like I, I don't. I, I, I'm not. I'm too old to change. Have you ever heard that? I'm too old to change. Can't teach an old dog a new trick. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. <laughs> if the dog, if the dog enjoys life, <laughs> if the dog has enjoyed his life or her life with you, of course they can learn new tricks, and we can too. Within six months of being all in, of saying, okay, no, no, he didn't say, okay, doc, you know, I get where you're, I get where you're going, but I'm only going to do three things. You pick what those three are, I'll do those three, but that's it. He didn't limit himself in any way. He, he decided he was going to go all in. 